So let's try to figure out the properties of tau of theta. All right, um, so as you can see, it all depends on the properties of Q of theta, uh, because the rest R and S are just positive uh, parameters. So let's try to remember uh, what are the properties of Q of theta. So this is something that we saw uh, when we studied the matching function, but it's good to, uh, to have a little reminder. Uh, so Q of theta, it's a vacancy filling rate. If you remember, it was given by M, the matching function, evaluated at 1 over theta and 1. You can look at, uh, you can look at um, the lecture on the matching function to see how we had derived that, where M is just our matching function. Um, so, as you can see from this, all the properties of Q of theta are going to come from the properties uh, of N. Um, so, what did we, what did we have, uh, what did we know about M? So, first of all, uh, we know that M is increasing in both arguments. We also know that when any of the two arguments is zero, M is equal to zero. We know that when any of the two arguments is infinite, M is also infinite. And so, using that, we'll be able to figure out the properties of Q of theta. So, first of all, we know that, of course, uh, Q of theta is positive, that's obvious. What about Q prime of theta? What is the sign of the derivative? Well, when theta goes up, 1 over theta goes down uh, here, and because the matching function is increasing in both arguments, theta goes up, 1 over theta goes down, M of 1 over theta and 1 is going to go down. So, we infer that Q prime of theta is negative. So the vacancy filling rate is decreasing with tightness. So when the market is very tight, when you have a lot of uh, when you have a lot of vacancies compared to the number of unemployed, you have a very low vacancy filling rate. Basically, lots of competition among vacancies, it's hard to fill a vacancy. When the tightness is very low and you have a lot of unemployed pair vacancy, then it's very easy to fill a vacancy. You know, it's always like that. It's very you just have to figure out which side of the market is uh, in a uh, large quantity compared to the other to know who is able to trade easily. The side of the market that's in small uh, number compared to the other side will always be able to trade very easily. Okay, will not be very congested. So Q prime of theta decreasing. Okay, very good. Um, what happens when theta is equal to zero? What is Q of zero? Well, when theta is equal to zero, one over theta is going to be infinite and the matching function is going to be infinite. So Q of zero is going to tend to uh, plus infinity, okay? And what is going to be Q of plus infinity? What's the limit when theta becomes infinite? Well, when theta becomes infinite, one over theta becomes zero and M of zero and one, that's just zero. So the limit of Q of theta at infinity is going to be equal to zero, okay? So these are going to be uh, our uh, key properties here. So how does that translate now for tau of theta. So tau of theta we said was r times s divided by q of theta minus r times s. Okay, very good. Um, so what are the properties? All right, so first of all, what happens when theta is equal to zero? When theta is equal to zero, um, Q of theta is Q of zero, so it's infinite, okay? And uh, from what we can see here, tau of theta is going to be equal to zero, okay? So tau of zero we can see from that, if you want, is R times S divided by infinity minus R times S, so it's equal to zero. Okay, so that's the first property. Tau of zero is zero. What does that mean? Well, it means that if there are no uh, vacancies that are posted on the market, it's very, if you're the one firm who posts a vacancy, it's very, very easy to post your vacancy, to fill your vacancy. It's basically immediate. And as a result, you don't really need to allocate anybody, you know, you don't really need to allocate an infinitesimal amount of workers to filling your vacancies. Okay? So that's a world in which you're the only firm recruiting. All the workers try to get 
that one job. And so for you, it's very, very fast to find you know, the best workers there. And you know, really at the limit, you don't need to allocate any workers to recruiting just because it's so fast to fill your vacancy. All right, so that's tau zero. Second question, what's, uh, how does tau uh, vary with uh, theta? Okay. So what is tau prime of theta? Well, if we look again at our expression for tau of theta, we know that q of theta is decreasing in uh, theta. And because it's in the denominator of our recruiter producer ratio tau of theta, we infer that tau of theta is going to be increasing in theta. Basically, when tightness falls, q of theta, the vacancy filling rate, is going up. And as a result, tau of theta is going to go down. So tau prime of theta is positive. So that means that as the tightness goes up, so as there are more and more vacancies posted on the market, firms have to allocate more and more workers to recruiting. So basically, at a high level, in bad times, if nobody is recruiting, it's very easy to recruit workers, and you don't need to allocate many workers to the task of recruiting. In good times, when the economy is booming, there are many, many vacancies. It takes a long time to find workers. You know, workers are scarce. You have to allocate many more workers to recruiting. Okay, so we have tau prime of theta positive. Okay, so it means that tau zero initially is zero, and then as theta goes up, tau is going to increase. Okay, but we can see uh, what's going to happen as theta goes up. Well, so as theta goes up, Q of theta is going to go uh, down. And at some point, it's very important to realize here, at some point what's going to happen is that we'll actually reach uh, an asymptote um, for, uh, for tau of theta. You can see that as Q of theta here As Q of theta gets close to R times S, Q of theta minus R times S is going to get close to zero, and tau of theta is going to go to infinity. So in fact, uh, the function tau of theta is only defined uh, because, of course, you know, the rock pressure ratio it has to be a positive, uh, it has to be a positive object. We're talking about workers, so the number of workers is, or the ratio of workers is always uh, positive. Uh, so tau of theta is going to define on zero and some maximum tightness that we we'll call theta m. So theta m is going to be, uh, well, in fact, if we want to be a bit accurate, we have to keep the interval open here. Uh, well, and in fact, if we want to be super accurate, we can also keep the interval open here because q of theta is not uh, technically defined on zero because it, it admits uh, it, it's infinite there. So tau of theta is defined on zero theta m. How is theta m defined? So theta m is going to be a vertical um, asymptote for the function uh, tau. Okay, and so how is theta m defined? Uh, theta m is going to be defined such that Q of theta m is equal to R times S. So theta m is a vertical asymptote for tau. Okay? Uh, and so once you reach theta m, Q of theta m is equal to R times S. And uh, you know, if you reach theta m from below, Q of theta m will just be a tad bigger than R times S. And as a result, tau of theta is going to be uh, infinite. So we have the limit as theta goes to theta m, uh, but from below. So if you want theta m minus uh, of tau of theta, that's going to be equal to plus infinity. Okay. And so I think these are really the key properties that we want uh, and that we need. And so let me just summarize all of this. The tiny graph. So here, just I want to represent theta. I want to study how theta uh, tau, how tau derives theta, have zero, 
of theta m. So what we've seen is that at zero, tau is equal to zero. So it's here. We've seen it's an increasing function, and we've seen that it reaches an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, as it reaches theta m. So that's how our function tau of theta uh, looks. Okay. And so if you want, if you try to uh, give uh, an interpretation here, so what do we have? Here, oops, sorry, my bad. Okay, uh, right. And so what this is telling you is as the tightness goes up, firms have to devote more and more workers to recruiting. And at the li limit where the tightness is theta time, what happens? Well, basically at that stage, it becomes so difficult for firms to recruit workers that they have, they have to allocate their entire workforce to recruiting. And basically, once you reach theta, you're in that strange situation where the firm is only made up of human resource workers. Of course, some of these workers leave at any point in time, you know, because you have a job separation rate. And so you have to use all the other remaining human resource workers to fill vacancies to replace the existing human resource workers who have left. And so in a world like that, once you um, once you have reached the time and you are at something like this, here you're in a world in which a firms the firm only has uh, recruiters. Okay, because the recruiter producer ratio goes to infinity. So that means that the number of recruiters is positive, the number of producers is equal to zero. Okay? Uh, so that's what you get when you get to theta m. You only have recruiters. So basically, your firm is made of recruiters. The firm loses recruiters at any point in time, and then they have to use all their remaining recruiters to replace them. Um, so this would be a world in which everybody only recruits each other, and that's all. There is nothing that's produced in the economy. Um, here, on the other end, at theta equal to zero, it's the exact opposite situation. So here, firm the firm only has uh, producers. Okay, so here, number of recruiters is zero, number of producers is positive. So this is a situation in which, because nobody is posting vacancies, if you post a vacancy, you can fill it immediately, and as a result, you don't need to devote any resources to recruiting. Okay, so I think that sums up all the properties, uh, I think that sums up all the properties of uh, the recruiter producer ratio. So, um, so now what we can do is uh, we can think about now that we've understood the structure, the composition of the of the labor force in the firm, we can think about how many workers a firm wants to to have and how they want to allocate this worker between recruiting and producing. So we can think about the firm strategic decision uh, of um, the number of workers that they want to hire, like how big they want to be. 